My name is Jaden, and this is... Xavier. Uh, and we are doing a reaction to my 10 years as an indie game development... Uh, developer. Oh. Yeah, development journey. Uh, so, me and Xavion are super passionate about video games. We actually have been uh, idea, like shooting ideas with each other about our own video games that we would like to create. And since we're passionate about it and we would want to learn more about it, we'd hope to introduce it, uh, at least share the experience with you. So, let's leave a like, comment, subscribe down below if you didn't write, um, Let's just get right into it, shall we? Exactly 10 years ago to the day, I uploaded my first video on this YouTube channel, which was a little devil video about my first ever game project that I just started a few months earlier. A decade later, and I'm still making games and devil videos, so to celebrate this milestone, I want to take you through that 10 year journey, from that very first game that I made as a hobby in my university dorm room, to releasing my first commercial game and becoming a full-time indie game developer. To start the story though, we need to go back a little further than 10 years, to the end of 2012, where I just had the idea for a game that, at the time, I thought was such a good idea that I needed to learn how to make games just so that I could make that game. I was 20 years old at the time, and I just finished my second year at university, where I was studying computer science, so I knew the basics of programming, but, apart from the coursework they set us, I'd never really attempted any big projects before. So, full of enthusiasm about my new idea for a game, I googled how to make an MMO, because that's the type of game that I wanted to make, and the first results all said, don't, it's too ambitious, you can't make an MMO on your own, so I scrolled past them, and I then found results saying that you should use an engine, but I didn't really know what that meant, so I scrolled past them as well, until finally I came across a YouTube tutorial series about programming 3D graphics with Java, and I clicked on that because Java was basically the only programming language I had any experience with. Over the next few weeks, I followed that tutorial series all the way through from start to finish, and I then felt that I was ready to start making my dream game. Soccer One was the name of the MMO that I wanted to make. It stood for someone come up with the name, but no one ever did, so I ended up just sticking with that. At the time, I was taking a year out from university and had just started a full-time internship, which I was going to be doing for a year, so I worked on the game mostly in the evenings and at the weekends. Pretty quickly, I found that I really enjoyed game development, and I really believed in the game that I was making, and I actually got quite obsessed and spent pretty much all of my free time and some of my work time programming the game and when I wasn't working on it I was always thinking about what feature I'd be implementing next. At the start I was still learning a lot from YouTube and while doing that I came across some other developers showing their games in videos called devlogs. There weren't very many around back then and they didn't get many views but they caught my interest and I thought that I would have a go at making my own. So I started recording some short three minute-ish videos each week where I would just record footage of the game and talk pretty much unedited about the progress that I'd made during that week. I didn't actually release the videos right away, I waited until I had about 15 of them stored up and I then uploaded all of them in quick succession in summer 2013. I think I thought it would give my channel more of a boost at the start, but I don't think it worked. Back then those initial videos were only getting something like 50 views, if I was lucky. The first months were all very technical because there was so much to learn about rendering 3D graphics, but I started implementing some basic gameplay around the end of 2013, which is more than a year after starting the project. My YouTube videos had also started to pick up a few viewers, and going into 2014, I'd made 22 devlog videos so far, and had around 220 subscribers, which I was very proud of. So that is it for this week and for this year. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos and for subscribing. I'm sorry that by now I was back doing my final year at university, but I spent most of my time, definitely more than I should, working on Sock One, and I was starting to make fast progress on the gameplay, including adding things like shops, combats and mobs, and I even had it all working in multiplayer. 
As the year went on, it was getting to the point where I had to start thinking about what I was going to do after university, and I was pretty keen on trying to do game development full time. My parents were less keen on the idea, understandably so, and looking back it was rather ambitious. I've always had in my memory that I had quite a large number of subscribers at the time, so it made sense that I might be able to manage full time somehow, but checking my analytics, I actually only had around 900 subscribers at the time. It's actually pretty good. But that didn't faze me. I absolutely wanted to do it. I had some savings from that year's internship that I did, and I worked out that if I lived very frugally, I could probably survive for around 10 to 12 months before I'd need to get a job. Around that time, Kickstarters were all the rage. In fact, the team who had made the devlog videos that had inspired me to get started with YouTube had also recently done a successful Kickstarter campaign, and they only had a bit over a thousand subscribers on YouTube. So I made a plan. I would work on Sogwan and my YouTube channel flat out, full time, for as long as my money would last, and I'd then do a Kickstarter campaign to hopefully keep the game dev dream alive. One year to get everything ready for the Kickstarter. It was time to get to work. In other news, after next week I'm going to be working pretty much full time on this game, and so these videos will hopefully be a weekly feature once again. I'm also going to be starting... So in summer 2014 I graduated from university, I did manage to get my degree despite spending most of the last year working on my game, and I guess I officially went full time as an indie game developer. I moved into a small flat in Watford, this was my workstation here, and I got to work trying to make my dream a reality. For the next year I really did work harder than ever, not just on Soccer One, but also on the YouTube channel as well. I was making weekly devlog videos, I also started a tutorial series which I worked on at the weekends, I even began a new devlog series which I called Behind the Scenes Devlogs which is where I would basically vlog every day, showing what I was working on, how I was implementing things, and just generally what life was like as an indie game developer. Sock One was also progressing faster than ever, and starting to look and play like an actual game. Halfway through the year I also created a dev kit for the game, which I made public, and I started to get a lot of community submissions of content for the game, lots of models, items and animations and such, and it became a really cool community project. Short bow. And there are also loads more weapons that you guys have made that I can't show in the game quite yet because they still need texturing or icons, but I should be able to show them in the game next week. Finally, there are even some new sounds. All in all, it was a really crazy year. I'd made over a hundred videos in total that year, which today is still almost a third of all of the videos on my channel. My YouTube channel had grown to 8,000 subscribers, the game that I dreamt of was coming to life, and I'd got to live my dream of being a full-time indie game developer for a bit. But the year of preparation was coming to a close, my money was running out, and the Kickstarter campaign was fast approaching. I'd had my taste of full-time game development and I really didn't want to give it up, so the Kickstarter meant everything to me, and at the time it really seemed like it was that or nothing. If the Kickstarter failed, it would all be over. So the Kickstarter campaign is now just two weeks away, and I'm currently just trying to make the game world look as nice as possible in this devlog video. So there are just four more days until the Kickstarter now, um, obviously, which I did manage to do, and I submitted it to Kickstarter, and it has now been approved. So everything is now ready to go for Friday. So today is the big day. The Kickstarter starts this evening at 7.30. And so on September 4th, 2015, after about three years of development on Sock One, I launched the Kickstarter campaign to try and get funding for the continuation of the project. And, well, I'll let past me tell you how it went. Now, 20 past one in the morning, um, it's been a really long evening, uh, but uh, it, at the moment it doesn't look very good, unfortunately. Um, it's using that as well, um, but unfortunately it, it just doesn't look like it's going our way. Um, as you can see, it, it still hasn't reached, as I'm sure you've all noticed by now. The Kickstarter has sadly not been doing very well, and I think it's safe to say at this stage that it is unfortunately not going to work out this time unless there's some sort of crazy. 
it didn't go very well, and I was devastated. It seemed like the end of the journey at the time. SOG 1 was game development for me. It was the reason I started game dev. I'd learned everything I knew by making SOG 1. I poured my heart and soul into it for three years straight, and then, just like that, it was over. It's kind of sad watching that video back. I remember just how disappointed I was at the time. I really thought it was the end, but actually, it turned out to be only the beginning. After the Kickstarter failed, I grudgingly started looking for a full-time job on account of me not having any money, but I didn't want to stop game development just yet, so I began work on my second game, Aquilinox. The idea was, this was going to be a very small project, something I could easily work on in my spare time while also having a job. Uh, for that reason, I switched to a low-poly art style, so I wouldn't have to worry so much about making models and textures, which had always been a bit of a weakness of mine, and I was aiming to finish the game in a few months. Spoilers, it ended up taking three years. Around the same time, I started using Patreon, which a few people had suggested after the Kickstarter failed. My hope was that I might be able to make enough income through YouTube and Patreon so that I'd only need to get a part-time job, leaving more time for game development, but thanks to the incredible support of some of my subscribers, it ended up making just about enough for me to continue full-time game development. And so began the Equinox years. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's game development log video diary and this week I'm going to be introducing my new project Equilinox. So what you're seeing The new game Equilinox was a nature simulation game and I started work on it with the plan that it would be something like a city builder game but for nature. So instead of creating and managing cities you would be creating and managing ecosystems with the aim of spreading nature over the entire world. Development of the game was fairly smooth it just took a lot longer than expected. I did go a bit off track somewhere in the middle of development. I think the vision got lost for a while and I had some scoping issues, but I think I managed to pull it all back together towards the end of the project. There was actually a time in the middle of development where I was seriously considering giving up on the project. It had already taken way longer than expected and the end was still nowhere in sight, so my motivation had really started to dip but thankfully, mostly because of the support I was getting on the devlog videos, I decided to stick it out and keep going. I kept making the devlog videos and tutorials throughout those years as well, and I started to prefer the behind the scene vlog style devlogs that I've mostly stuck with ever since. The channel grew quite a lot in this time, I think because of the popularity of those behind the scenes videos, and it went from 8,000 subscribers to around 80,000 subscribers over the three years. Wow. In May 2018, I was getting That's very close impressive. to finishing a game for the first time ever. The Quininox was almost done, and I had just put out a video announcing the release date for Equinox, which was going to be Friday the 8th of June. It looked like I was finally going to be able to achieve my dream scale. of releasing a game. Hey everyone and welcome to this quick update video and unfortunately I don't have very good news for you this week. I'm really really sorry. It wasn't to be. Not yet at least. Just two days after announcing the release date I went to the dentist because I had a sore on my tongue and it turned out to be a little bit of cancer. So obviously I suddenly had very different worries. The release had to be postponed and I had an operation and spent some time in hospital. The good news though is that it all went very well and I've been cancer free ever since. I got back to work in July but I took it a bit slow to start with Lucky. and I didn't announce a new release date until October. In the end, these extra few months of development were actually really useful and allowed me to polish up the game very nicely so while I obviously can't say that I'm happy about what happened, it did at least have one benefit. Equinox was now more polished than ever and I was ready to have another shot at releasing it. On the 23rd of November 2018, over six years since I first started game development, I was finally ready to release Equinox, the first game I'd ever finished. I was really nervous leading up to the release. A lot of the time I was worried that I'd made a terrible game and that people were just going to be very disappointed with me. I mean, it's a game where you literally watch grass grow. But in the last few weeks before launch, I felt like it had all come together quite nicely. 
I finally been able to see the game as a finished product. The trailer was done, the website was done, all the preparations were done, so I was feeling quietly satisfied, a bit optimistic, and ready for launch. The release day itself was a bit of an anti-climax in the end. I released the Quillinox, or at least I tried to, but there was a bug with Steam and the button to buy the game didn't show up on the store page, so no one could actually get a Quillinox. After a few hours, a handful of people managed to find a workaround, so about 300 people did manage to get the game on launch day, and they seemed to like it and weren't coming across any game-breaking bugs, so it ended up being a bit like a test release and actually helped me to feel quite a bit more confident about the game. A full two days later, Steam got back to me saying sorry and that they'd fixed the bug, so finally, finally, the Quininox was released. And it was crazy, the game did way better than I expected. Not that I really knew what to expect, because I'd never released a game before. Um, based on the number of wish lists, I was roughly estimating 5,000 to 10,000 sales, but it reached 10,000 copies sold in the first couple of weeks. People seemed to be genuinely enjoying the game. It had 97% positive ratings on Steam at the time, and it was even trending on Steam for a bit. And then because of that, quite a few YouTubers and streamers picked up the game, which helped it to get even more publicity. A couple of the people who made videos about Equinox were actually YouTubers who I'd already been following and watching for years, so that was a bit of a highlight for me when it happened. It was very cool and kind of surreal, hearing them talking about my game suddenly. It's something I'd always imagined and hoped might happen someday. But now, finally, it was actually happening. Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Equilinox, which is uh, a late candidate for like feel good video game story of the year, or maybe just feel good. Those first few weeks after launch were pretty mad. I was trying to fix any bugs that arose as quickly as possible, and I was working through loads and loads of suggestions and feedback. After a while though, things began to calm down, and I then started to enjoy what was probably the best time in my career so far. I finally felt like a real game developer, because I'd actually released a game. The launch had been pretty successful, and I knew that I was going to be able to continue doing full-time game development, so in that sense my target was already met. So I was able to relax a bit and just enjoy being a game developer, working on a game that people were actually playing, implementing their suggestions, and working on all of the fun features that I didn't think were important enough to work on before release. My YouTube channel also hit 100,000 subscribers during that time, so it was all going very well. In summer 2019, about eight months after the release, I decided it was time to move on from Equilinox. The new game was going to be a low-poly city builder, and again I was planning to make my own engine. I'd learned so much from working on Equilinox, and there was a lot about the Equilinox engine that I felt that I could do better, so I started completely from scratch, and I built an improved engine from the ground up, including a GUI library, which was probably one of the most complex things I'd ever worked on, and I still use it to this day. While I show you footage of how the City Builder game progressed, I thought I should quickly talk about why I always choose to make my own engine, instead of just using a pre-made engine like Unity. Initially, when I first started game development, as I've already talked about, I did not know what I was doing, I had no experience, I didn't have a clue what a game engine was or how difficult it was to make one, so I just kind of accidentally stumbled into working without an engine. By the time I started the City Builder game though, I'd had almost seven years of experience of making my own engine and zero experience of using an engine like Unity, so in many ways I didn't even really think about it, it was just the obvious choice, it was what I've always done. The main reason though is I just really enjoy it. At the time I was really looking forward to having another go at writing all of the rendering code and optimising all of the parts that I felt I hadn't done so well in Equinox, and I still feel this way. I just find it really satisfying doing everything from scratch. I love knowing how every little bit of the game works and having control over how every single byte of every vertex in a model is stored in memory. Making my own engine is what got me so hooked on game development back when I first started. For anyone who's not specifically interested in engine development though, and doesn't want to spend years learning about it, I would always recommend just using an engine like Unity. It's definitely a quicker and more efficient route to take, but less enjoyable, for me at least. Anyway, having said all that, I worked on the City Builder for a couple of years and it was a bit of a struggle. 
It was rather more ambitious than I had initially thought. I had to tackle quite a lot of complex topics that I'd never done before, like pathfinding, the road network and traffic, and an activity system, and I found it all pretty slow going. It also wasn't helped by the fact that I had some more health issues around that time. Just three months after starting the project, I had a collapsed lung, and I ended up having three lung operations over the next half a year, so I was struggling a lot with motivation. The YouTube channel suffered a bit as well. In 2020, I only managed to make four videos, and in 2021, I only made five. So towards the end of 2021, I came to the conclusion that I needed to switch to a smaller project. Clearly, the city builder was a bit above what I could handle at the time, and even though I'd put a lot of work into it already, I felt like I'd barely scratched the surface of the project. Progress was desperately slow, and I could feel myself slowly falling out of love with game development. So on January the 1st, 2022, I began work on yet another game. I didn't tell anyone at first because I wanted to make sure that this new project was definitely what I wanted to do, but by the end of January I was very sure it was the right move and I released the first devlog video about it. The new game was called Homegrown and it's the game I'm still working on today. It's a casual farming game where you grow vegetables in your garden, sell them at the local market and use the money to improve your farm and upgrade your tools and equipment so that you can farm progressively faster and more efficiently. I used the same engine that I made for the City Builder game and to start with I reused a lot of the models from Aquilinox but after six months of the project I overhauled the engine and I switched to some improved graphics with new models, better lighting and a terrain generation system that generates meshes with rounded edges and corners which I'm very happy with. The project has been so enjoyable so far, it's exactly the right level of difficulty for me. Not too difficult that I get stuck, but enough of a challenge to keep me interested. It's got a really simple core game loop, but almost endless possibilities for features that could be built on top of that, so it's extremely fun to work on as a game developer. And I think it's only fitting if 21 year old me says the final words. But yeah, that is all for this week, so do have a look next week for the next video. Um, thank you very much for watching this, and have a nice day. What? So... Wanna talk about it? Sure! <laughs> I mean, the, the way... Um, I have to say, oh my goodness, he has gone through so much, so and at the end, uh, he became a success. And um, you know that's what most of successful, I mean, successful stories are all about, though. Yeah, trial error. You try one thing, you work on it. Doesn't always work out. Your second one, you'll have more practice experience, and you'll do better on that next one. I mean, and like, sometimes it's all that matters. And you know what he said before when he was working on uh, Equinox, or I, I think it was the. Uh, E Equilux? I think so. That's the e one with the wildlife, was, right? Was, yeah, when he was working on Equilux, so he said he didn't have. A, he said he didn't. He said he didn't exactly start out though. He didn't have a job yet though. But when no, he, it was a race of time for him. He had like almost a whole entire year to get most of it ready, um, so that. Um, wait, no, no. That that was the first one. The first one he worked three years on it. But the last year, he didn't have a job for it. So he didn't have an actual job. He was just making YouTube videos, and he uh, saved up enough on his internship to last him, if, if he did it moderately, yeah. 12 months. Yeah, and um, that, that's good, though. But um, the way I would do it, though, if I were in his shoes, um, I would um, I would eventually like, get a job, uh, save up money, though, say, uh, do... Uh, make make a several um, make make several stacks or more like um sa or savings um, savings piles of money though because I have money for home money for the game and then money for uh, bills and stuff though that's how I would do it though right um, but like he was trying to make sure because he was so positive that his game would be such a hit because he poured his heart his soul into it that he's like I can stretch it out and if um, I need to, I can start a thing, like, um, oh, that's a, 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 um, a an ad, a uh, kind uh, of, an advertisement, an advertisement. So when it, uh, so when that advertisement hit, he was hoping for the best, 
but on the other side, he was also looking for a job at that exact same time. So he was essentially planning for a backup and then another backup for that backup. So I mean, I would do that. So I mean, how how would you do it? Uh, it depends. Okay. So like, it, it it depends on how I handle myself in the earlier off. What I'm planning to do with what I want to do, and it, it just it just depends on like all that yeah I mean like on the other hand I get where he's coming from I would totally do that if necessary but it all depends on where I'm at financially and all that other stuff yeah. okay so we're finishing it off now uh, I hope you enjoyed learning uh, from this youtuber um, we will see you Next time, sorry we haven't been uploading that much. Uh, we've been um, having some technical difficulties, but we managed to work them all out. Yeah. So, so see ya. See ya. Bye. See you on the other side. Yep. Goodbye. On the other side. Oh man, that is corny. I know.